Ugh. I got a haircut. I look more like a boy and I like it. <laughs> Witchlings, welcome back to my channel. It's me. Oh, you look chaotic witch on it. Today's video topic is expi is spy <laughs> expired. Inspired by some questions that I got on Instagram recently. Let me apply my lip my lip gloss. Lip gloss break. This is by Kamav Cosmetics. I love them. You should definitely get some stuff from them. I also have a cookie for like a snack. If I need a snackage, if I'm feeling in a snacky mood. <laughs> so if I get hungry in the middle of this, I got, I'm covered. I, would, I added, asked people to, you know, ask me questions about my practice, folk magic, folk Catholicism, etc. Um, just to kind of, so to allow people to flush out like you know these ideas that they had about my practice and what ended up happening is I got a lot of the same question <laughs> or very similar questions I was expecting and I think I, I got a little frustrated when I first started to film this video because I realized that a lot of people were coming at understanding my practice entirely wrong I don't mean that in a bad way I just mean that what I the vibe and what I felt from people kind of coming in and asking me the same question over and over again was that people had a fundamental misunderstanding of one, folk Catholicism, and two, folk Catholicism as it functions in Italian American folk magic. I actually wrote like a little article that is going to be up on my Patreon um, at my Rosa tier that I will be referencing throughout this video because I really, I, I needed to kind of get it on paper because I ended up just getting really flustered and frustrated when trying to answer the questions by themselves. Um, I don't have the questions with me because I feel like I'm going to get f frustrated again if I look at them, but a lot of the questions have to do with, um, one, uh, how, how can you work with saints but not work with God? How can you not like work with Jesus, but work within folk Catholicism. How do you separate Catholicism from the church? How are you practicing, but not Catholic? Um, and so to understand folk Catholicism as I practice it, we have to understand a few things. We have to understand how it functions um, in the cultural context of Italy. We have to understand how it functions within the folk magic of Italy, and we have to understand that it is not the church. Um, so we're going to start off by understanding folk magic. Um, and this is a generalization. This doesn't just apply to one singular folk magic, and it doesn't apply to every single folk magic. There are going to be differences in practices. Um, folk magic uh, typically relies on a few things to function. Notice I say typically, and that is the people who are practicing it as number one. Folk magic is the magic of the people. So what the people need, what the people have access to, the culture that the people are raised in, that influences folk magic. Number two, the culture of the region. It is impossible to understand a folk magic or elements of a particular folk magic without understanding the cultural context in which it comes from. Um, and three, the materials that are accessible to the practitioner. Now these all kind of have subsections. When we talk about the people, we are talking about what the people need, what the people believe, the um, societal norms that the people are working and the religion of the people. So folk magic is not always syncretized with folk Catholicism. That entirely depends on what the people of the region actually believe in practice. If you are in an area where the Catholic Church was dominant, you're probably going to see folk magic syncretized with more Catholicism versus if you're in an area where Islam is dominant, you're going to see the folk magic syncretized with that religion, with Islam. Um, and this furthermore goes into variations of, you know, that as well. Um, folk magic is 
not a monolith. There's no one way to say this is what folk magic does and have it 100% be applied. So take that into consideration throughout the duration of this video. I am talking from the perspective of an Italian American folk practitioner, um, not someone who knows every single folk magic and can speak for every single folk magic. One of the things I wrote that I really like is that folk magic is practical. It does not concern itself with the great mysteries of the universe, but rather looks to see how to benefit oneself and those around us. I think that for me is the answer to a lot of people asking me my belief of God. I have never concerned myself with it. <laughs> I have never sat down and had, I, I have some existential crises sometimes, and there was a point where I knew that I didn't believe um, in the Christian God as my God. But I don't necessarily go around asking Italian Americans their beliefs um, when it comes to God and Catholicism, because we can, we can have that conversation for sure, but it isn't necessarily going to be reliable. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of folk practitioners, when you go to them, they're going to say, I'm a good Catholic, at least in, in, in Italian American, I'm a good Catholic, I'm a Catholic, I go to church, but they're doing things that the church disagrees with. They're doing things that the church would consider witchcraft. They're doing things that makes them not a good Catholic in the idea of Christianity through the church and a lot of different branches of Christianity in America. In the same way, I go to people and say, I'm not a Christian like me, but I'm doing things that definitely are practiced in the church, but I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Catholic. Uh, I do not subscribe to the teachings of Catholicism. Um, I don't read the Bible. I consider myself to be someone that is a folk, folk practitioner, a practitioner of folk magic. And that may mean that some elements of Catholicism are indoctrinated into our folk magic, but I am not necessarily going out of my way. And that's what makes me kind of a folk Catholic <laughs> is because I am learning it from folk practitioners. Um, and that's the thing about folk Catholicism, which we're going to have to <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna have to talk about that. I have an entire section in this article that goes, is folk magic Catholicism? So folk magic will function as an extension of the people, their beliefs, and the culture around them. When we look at different countries, it will function differently. Um, to understand folk Catholicism, we have to break it down into a few separate areas. And these are overlapping, but they are not all the same. The church is an institution that includes Christianity that has done a lot of harm and colonized, forced people, like for, in, ensures politics. Um, it is an institution. It is not a religion. Christianity is a religion that is included in the church, but is not the same as the church. There are Christians who don't go to church in the same way that the church says, this is what Christianity is, this is what we do. But there are a lot of people who consider themselves Christians that disagree with what the church says. Catholicism is a sect of Christianity, one that typically is frowned upon because of its worship of idols or saints. And then folk Catholicism is the Catholicism of the people. When we talk about the church and Christianity, we are often understanding it from the lens that we grew up with. So if you are in America, this is American Christianity that often but not always centers Jesus and the church. Um, that is not a thing <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> Yeah, he's around. He's the son of God. We, we def he's definitely revered. Um, but when there's a problem, he is not the person that we are going to. And that, in part, is because of the practitioners of Italian folk magic. The practitioners of Italian folk magic were primarily women. So when they were having issues that were centric to people who give birth or have uteruses or people who identify as women, they were calling on saints that looked like them, that had been through similar experiences or that they felt they could relate to. Mary, mother of God is one. A, someone who as a saint was a mother, uh, gave birth and then saw her child be murdered in front of her, tortured and murdered in front of her. So we have these kind of things that every person who has had a child 
could possibly relate to. Um, or there are people who have, have had children who can relate to that experience. Um, in the same way, we can see Santa Lucia, who was publicly and brutally tortured and beaten because she refused to be wed in an arranged marriage. Um, she was martyred for this because it was, in the eyes of the church, an act of her faith. But at the end of the day, this was, St. Lucy was a woman telling a man no. And she was killed for it. She was killed because she said no to an arranged marriage. St. Agatha was mutilated, imprisoned, and um, assaulted by a man who wanted her to wed to him. Once again, a woman who said no to a man and was brutalized for it. St. Rita was abused by her husband. La Madonna Schiavona is known as the patron saint to queer individuals, petitioned and worshipped by the Feminelli, a third gender known only to Italy. So these are a lot of saints we see in Italian folk magic. We hear a lot about Agatha of Sicily, Santa Lucia in Evil Eye Cures, um, the Madonna and different apparitions of the Madonna, but, and of course there are male saints as well. Uh, Saint Anne's another big one, but I'm when we look at the prayers to heal things, when we look at who was invoked in times of struggle during difficult childbirth, um, during divinatory rites to figure out who who a husband was, things that, you know, were of great importance to rural women in South Italy, because uh, I am speaking once again from the research of the southern region, we are not seeing them call on God and Jesus. We're seeing them call on people who will understand their struggles and where they're coming from and understand that these are spirits who can help them. There's even a quote in one of a book I like called Italian American Folklore, where an Italian American is talking about St. Anthony, his patron saint, saying he's more handsome and more powerful than Jesus. That's kind of a vibe, and not everyone's gonna hold that. There are definitely gonna be Catholics in Italy who 100% put Jesus above everyone else. But when it comes to folk magic, there's not a lot of things we can petition Jesus for that we are actually like having issues with in the modern day. St. Joseph, yes, he can help us sell a house. St. An Anthony can help with your lost keys. St. Anthony can help you find uh, and recover lost income. Um, St. Peter is less petitioned, but he's, you know, gates of heaven, crossroads. Uh, we don't really see a lot of us uh, petitioning Jesus because he in this in folk in like Catholicism in you know this region and this cultural context is the son of God. So when he's invoked, he's invoked as such. But he isn't typically invoked very often. You may say the Our Father at the end of the ritual, but what who really is invoked is Mary, um, the Madonna, the Mother of God. That's where the power is put. Not in Jesus, the Son of God, in Mary, the Mother of God. Because <laughs> and I always say like this. If you are someone, and, and another aspect of folk magic as well, and we're talking about folk magic first, because then we can look at folk Catholicism. Um, folk magic, like I said, said, is practical. It functions on necessity. It will function to help the people. And as the people change over time, as does folk magic. So there may have been a time in history where more men were practitioners and different saints were called on. but. In present time, um, not like super present time because there's more kind of a push back to like goddess um, or god right now, but 1950s, 1960s uh, with kind of the references that I'm using are Power and Magic in Italy, uh, Italian Magic Secret Lives of Women by Karen Crisis, uh, Italian American folklore. These, these prayers that we're finding, um, these rituals that are used, the saints that are really given importance are the ones that are reachable. When you have a church in your city and you don't have a car and you can't really go anywhere, this is a generalization, there are a lot of Italians in the South who have cars. But, for example, let's say you don't have a car and you gotta, you gotta pray, you gotta, you gotta petition someone because everything's going to shit. You cannot get to the next village over and talk to that patron saint. You are gonna to talk to the saint that you have talked to a hundred times before who has helped you in a bunch of different things, or you're gonna to go to your, your local church or go to the patron saint of your village. It is very much based on location, not on 
what's going on in the church. And that is, in part, folk Catholicism. That's how we need to understand the folk magic in Italy and who was practicing it and the cultural context of Italy before we move over to folk Catholicism. Many people who identify as folk Catholics or use elements of folk Catholicism in their practice can include those who disagree with the church as an institution, those with religious trauma from the church, or even those who don't identify as Catholics. Many folk practitioners use folk Catholicism in their practice, do so without ever stepping foot in a church. They learn how to interact with, venerate, and honor the saints through their elders, teachers, and experiences with the spirits themselves, rather than the institution. The folk Christianity of Hoodoo uses different herbs and invokes different saints than the folk Christianity of Italy and Germany, but all have this as an element in their practice. Both prioritize different rituals for the needs of the people and call on different spirits to help them in these traditions. Folk Catholicism and folk magic has to be understood not only through a cultural context, but through a sociological anthropological and folklore at one. It has to not only be separated from the church, but considered individually, individually and separately between each person who practices it. There are a lot of people I know who identify as folk Catholics. Um, most of them are queer. <laughs> most, uh, a lot of them have religious trauma inflicted by the church. Uh, that they have worked through at, by creating a relationship with the spirits of the Church of Catholicism outside of the realm of the Church. That's something you can do. The Church is not an authority. It is an institution. The only people who say it's an authority are the Church and some Christians. That's not how... That is not go off organized religion but that's not my vibe and a lot of people ask me well how do you how do you you know take part in this where where you don't you're not catholic you don't believe in god i'm like i do believe in god i just don't talk to him we're in it we're at i worship a goddess <laughs> diana um and I don't really talk to Jesus because I don't need to invoke him for a lot. There's not a lot going on where I need water changed to wine or I need my soul prayed for. You know what I do need? Help with taxes. I'm going to Matthew, all right? The tax, the tax collector, because I'm pretty sure he can help me there. Um, I'm not going to Jesus. Furthermore, when we're trying to understand what folk Catholicism is. It is the Catholicism of the people. It is not necessarily informed by the church or the doctrine of Christianity as a whole. I do not care about what Christianity tells me I can and cannot do. The only part that I care about is what my teachers say, what my elders say, what my family says, and what I have experienced through working within the realm of folk Catholicism through the lens of Italian folk magic. Because that's what it is. I am not going into a church and just becoming a Christian. I'm not confirmed. I'm technically not supposed to be doing this. Technically. I don't think that a religion that has tried to convert hundreds of thousands of people and continues to do so every day can say it's closed. That's my opinion. I also don't think that based off all the harm the church has done, they can try to protect it now. Their prayers are on the internet. You can find them and you can do them in your home. <laughs> Part of folk magic is, well, if there isn't a church nearby, do it yourself. DIY your own holy water. DIY your own ashes for Ash Wednesday. Get your own blessed top palms. Bless your own things. I am creating an anointing oil based off of the use the anointing oils used in the Bible, blessed with the prayers used that are typically only supposed to be said by Catholic priests. Because you can find them. That is folk Catholicism. And I know if a Christian watches this, they say that's sacrilege. I'm like, no. That's just Catholicism practiced by the people. That is Catholicism without looking to an authority to tell them how to behave, how to behave or how to interact with these spirits. Do I still 100% use like church methods sometimes for getting things done? Yeah, I still pray a novena. I'll do a nine day prayer, but I also line that prayer up with a spell candle. Um, I will use prayers that were used by the church or conduct a certain manner of things that the church uses 
because there's power in it. Not because the church is used, but because it has been given so much power of people praying it year after year after year. Someone asked me if I pray the Our Father. Rarely. But when I do, I do it because there are hundreds of thousands of people who have used that prayer in moments of needing solace, in moments of protection, in so many different ways, that now it has become kind of its own thing. I don't necessarily need to call on God with the Our Father. I need to just use it as a literally kind of like a spell. Furthermore, many folk Catholics wouldn't even consider themselves so. They would just do things that the church would frown upon. That's kind of just what folk Catholicism is, the Catholicism of the people. And sometimes the people are practicing folk magic and the people are doing things that the church is like, you shouldn't, you can't do that. That's against our teachings. And they're like, well, it's what we've done for generations. I'm not stopping now. It is no longer Catholicism informed, informed by the church and taught by the church, but a spirituality that creates relationships with spirits in Catholicism that aren't dictated by the church. Folk Catholicism in Italy often functions in a way that the church disapproves of. Many of the healing methods and rituals in Italian and Italian-American folk magic would be considered witchcraft or sacrilege by the church. Catholicism in Italy also still contains tradi traditions that are reminiscent of ancient Roman religion. While these rituals or traditions are no longer considered paganism because they are so syncretized into the veneration of saints and the culture of Italy, they are easily spotted. Certain temples of Roman gods became churches of particular saints and certain rituals associated with the worship of Roman gods con continued on in veneration and holidays of the saints. The Assumption of Mary takes place two days after the festival for Diana at the Lake of Nemi. And they do have similar rituals. <laughs> there are people that will give votive offerings to saints of body parts that need to be healed, which is also something found in ancient Greece and Rome. Offerings of flowers, the tight way veneration functions. In Italy, the festivals, if you look hard enough, there are some things where you're like, I don't know where that came from way back then. Folk Catholicism in Italy is not just a spirituality that is Catholic outside of the church. It is remnants of older beliefs, rituals, and traditions passed down through generations to the modern day. Folk Catholicism is not just a separation of the church and the religion. It is sometimes a belief in opposition to the church itself. Folk Catholicism is about forming a relationship with saints, spirits, and even prayers outside of the ideas of the church and sometimes even the Bible. You ever like, do you read the Bible? No. I do not follow the teachings of man. I form my own opinions with the spirits of this religion, which saints and a lot of saints are not just Catholic. They are syncretized and used in a lot of other traditions that are closed practices across the globe. So they're not just Catholic spirits, they're spirits that have appeared in a lot of different places. And that's not even folk saints. We're not even in that area yet. I'm gonna take a little snack break. So to understand folk Catholicism, we have to understand that not only is it separate from the church most times, even if that person's still going to church, they're probably doing things that are not sanctioned <clears throat> by the church. Um, that's me. I do a lot of things that <coughs> the Catholic church would be like, whoa, that's witchcraft. Hello? 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 I'm talking about Catholicism. Woo! <laughs> Specifically folk Catholicism. I didn't get a woo for that one. So folk Catholicism is not just, it isn't the by the book church religion. And many folk Catholics probably don't, there's a lot of us that do go to church. I don't. <laughs> I do not. Um, and that's fine. I know of people specifically, someone reached out to me the other day and was like, I don't think that people are considering that sometimes the folk are those who have actually been hurt by the church. And there are a lot of people with that kind of trauma that are able to separate it, the Catholicism and the spirits of Catholicism like Mary from the church and a lot of people who aren't. 
And both of them are really valid responses to the horrific things that the church has committed. The saints are not just a Catholic entity. They are our ancestors and the holy dead, our teachers and mentors, and oftentimes we seek them out because they will assist us in areas we most need help with. This may be a top surgery, protection while performing sex work, or even revenge on an abuser or assaulter. When we move past the teachings of the church, we realize that these spirits are not just within it. They exist without of it. Outside of it, perform miracles and assist us because they too were once human, and they too have gone through things that we are asking for help with. Our saints are not just dead and canonized, but folk saints and living saints who assist us on our path and help us get closer to our understanding of the universe. I met with a friend the other day, and they also told me the idea of dead saints is very much a Christian thing. They're like, who are the living saints you know? And I think that's a really great question. Saints are also not just canonized by the church. I know a lot of folk saints that are like heavily worshipped by different communities. Marsha P. Johnson, David Bowie, uh, Prince, Kurt Cobain, all of these people who influenced someone's life in a really transformative way and are now venerated as a holy dead, like the holy dead, as our as part of our lineages of our identity. We have to understand folk Catholicism, not only just outside of the church, but as a product of the culture it exists in. If you are working within folk Catholicism or folk Christianity within a certain folk magic, it's gonna be an incredibly different approach to what I'm doing because it is 100% influenced by the people who believe in it. And so it changes with us. When my family immigrated over from Italy, they brought with it these beliefs and then they continued to morph and change and grow until you know we got to my mom who left the Catholic church and then you got to me where I'm like, oh, I don't go to church, but I'll talk to Mary. And I'm not a Catholic. I don't consider myself a Catholic. I'm not someone who attends church recently. I don't go to Christmas mass unless I need to get a Eucharist or perform a lemon hex. I don't necessarily go to church because I don't think I gain anything from it. My magic, my beliefs, my everything exists outside of the church. It exists in the cultural context of Italian and Italian American folk magic. And within that, it exists as something that continues to change. I'm, I know my family, my grandma, my great grandma, we consider themselves good Catholics, but I don't, I am not a good Catholic. I, however, will stay, still say my novenas, which really seems to be all they care about. <laughs> um, someone has asked me too, they asked me, what was the moment that this clicked for you? Like, what was the time? What, when did this start working? Because there was a lot of pushback from me at the beginning um, because I 100% saw the church as Christianity. Christianity and the church were one and the same. Everything I had been taught in church was what Christianity stood for. But that doesn't work when you take it out of the context of where you are right now. It also doesn't work because not all churches are the same and all branches of Christianity aren't even the same. So me thinking that my you know, Lutheran teachings were the same as Italian Catholic, influenced by folk magic, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not the same. And I think I realized at one point, I, th I think it hit me when I prayed to the right saints. <laughs> I stopped trying to hit up those saints that I really had never formed a relationship with. And I started talking, I, p I petitioned the saints that my, we found like prayers of in my grandma's stuff, which was Mary of the Miraculous Medal and St. Anthony. I prayed to them. And all of a sudden I was like, they responded and they don't care that I'm not a Catholic. <laughs> and that's the thing is I think a lot of people are like, how does it work? It just does. I just did it. I did it respectfully. I did it through a lot of research and experimentation and practice. And I did it through the lens of Italian folk magic. 
So if there are prayers, vernacular prayers that are used a lot in Italian American folk magic or in a region of Italy, I will use those. If there are certain novenas that are more often used in Italian American folk magic than in the common Christian thing, I will use those. I still am using Catholic approaches, but they are Catholic approaches that have been entrenched in magic. And I think that's where a lot of people don't get it is because you're looking at folk Christianity and you're seeing the institution. You're seeing the church, which I don't fault you for. I think it's incredibly hard to separate the two. It becomes easier the more you realize that a lot of the Catholicism that was functioning in Italy and currently in Italian America is like not the church. I consider Mary and Diana to be two sides of the same coin and every single Italian American folk practitioner I've talked to is like, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm like, right? Not a single one of us are sitting here being like, oh, are you going to church? Oh, but you do this, you can't be Catholic. No, we're all just sharing prayers and being like, oh, we have a remedy, we have this, let's share it. Which saint do you go to for this issue or do you prefer a deity? This is another thing. I am not a traditional Italian woman. I am genderqueer. I do not, I'm, I'm not great at cooking. I do cook to honor my ancestors, but a lot of people are like, well, well, what if you like, what if you, what if you, do your ancestors hate you? And I'm like, I've literally never had an experience that told me that they weren't proud of me or happy that I was reconnecting. They never really looked at me and were like, what the fuck are you? They saw that I was following in their footsteps and said, oh, the rest isn't my business. I said this to my friend, I do think that death is not static. I think, and this is my opinion, and it is going to be different depending on the ancestor worship in different practices and folk magics and religions, but for me, I don't feel as though my ancestors have necessarily held on to the same beliefs. There are some things that I have to explain to them, like inflation. Um, <laughs> Like, okay, so I know that you think this is a lot of money. It is a lot of money for you, but for me, this is not a lot of money. And they're like, uh, why? I'm like, there's this really cool thing called trickle down economics. Um, <laughs> there are certain things that I have to explain to them, but there are also certain things that like, I have never had an experience with where they've like disrespected me. And if they had, I kicked them out. Because ancestors, there's a lot of trauma to be worked through generationally. That may be wealth trauma. That may be trauma from queer ancestors who weren't accepted. That may be trauma around neurotypicalness or assimilation into the US. And once you start working through that, there are things that are healed down the line that just, it lines up. <laughs> You know, if the culture in Italy being incredibly different from the culture in America, there's an understanding in folk magic that it will change with the people. We don't have to hold on to tradi traditional beliefs that are problematic. We don't have to go over, we don't have to do what the church says. We don't have to do what your great great uncle, great grand uncle Jerry said to do when he's like, a racist and an anti-semitic and he's homophobic we don't have to do that because we are the people you are the people when you look at folk magic and folk catholicism this is no longer about what the church says it's about what you need what benefits you what do you need do you need help getting top surgery and you want to talk to saint agatha for it do it saints want to help they don't always necessarily care what it's for if it's top surgery, St. Agatha is the patron saint of breast cancer patients. Top surgery is like right there. And a lot of people have petitioned St. Agatha for top surgery. Same with St. Rita of getting out of an abusive situation or getting revenge on an abuser. St. Rita has been in that situation. She will help you in what you ask her for. As long as you explain it to her and be like, this is going to help, how? Like, this is how it helps. The, saint, the saints were people. They experienced very similar things to us and although they performed miracles, when we go to them and say, I'm having this problem and I know you have this problem too, can you help me fix it? A lot of times they aren't gonna be like, no. Um, 
But I also believe, and I talked about this with my friend, people ask me how does this work? And I'm like, well, I'm talking to the saints that my grand, great, great, great grandparents talked to. <laughs> do I think nepotism exists in saint work? Yes. Do I think that cultural context of which saints were important to your family, region, and like country is important? Yes. I'm not gonna go out of my way and talk to La Santa Muerte. That is not someone that has ever been petitioned in my family, nor is that within the cultural context of Italy. Will I maybe go out of my way and petition a few saints uh, that are specific to my ancestor's town in Italy? Yes. Will I go out of my way and petition Padre Pio if I feel like it? I don't know if I want to talk to him. <laughs> but there are saints around you within your culture, within your practice that are being petitioned, like folk magic wise, for different reasons. And no one's going to the church and asking if it's okay. No one's sending an email to the Vatican being like, I want to ask St. Anthony for help on growing this. Can he do that? Because why? Why would we go to the church as an authority when this is not about the church? This is about folk magic. This is about us. This is about our community. This is about our people. What can you do to help your community? And who can you talk to to help with that? Babe, what? can I get a kiss? You want some cookie? You almost broke the mirror. That's seven years of bad luck. Unless we throw it in a river. I don't even know where the mirror's from. I do. Of course I do. I'm a witch. You want some cookie? If you're sitting there and being like, well, this folk magic is heavily syncretized with Catholicism, um, and I'm, but I'm really uncomfortable with it. And if you are someone who is not able to separate the church from the saints and you don't really want to go anywhere near it, that's okay. Remember, you are the folk. If it's in Italy, just go to Rome. Just scoot, scoot back a little farther. <laughs> if it's in Greece, go to Greece. There are ways for you, there is always someone kind of older hanging around. You just gotta figure out who it is. Um, in a lot of places, those older entities have become syncretized with saints and you can just scoot back a little further, just change the name. Um, that's how it is with Mary and Diana. When I wanna talk to, when I'm not in the mood for Mary, I go, Diana. When I'm not in the mood for Diana, I go to Mary. It is possible to approach this in a way that suits you and that benefits you. If you're like, okay, well, I'm comfortable like approaching a relationship with Our Lady, with the Virgin Mary, but I don't want to pray the rosary and I don't want to say these prayers. Okay, that's fine. What else can you do to honor her? You can make her a devotional oil. You can burn a candle for it for her. You can make her a little altar space. You don't need to go through the proper routes. All that matters is that you are respectful. Are you respecting the spirits and what they are going to teach you? Are you doing it in a way that is respectful of their cultural context and origin, even if you're not 100% following the rules? Because you don't have to 100% follow the rules because the rules were made by the church. And what do we say in this house? Fuck the church. Say it with me, fuck the church. The only thing the church go, I the only thing I go to church for is the Eucharist. All right, I stick it under my tongue. Yes, I have celiac disease. Yes, it gets me sick, but then you take it home, you to put it away, you can hex someone with it. All right, like that's sacrilege. <laughs> I'm just out here committing sacrilege and people are like, how do you do this? I'm like, I literally don't ask. Here's the thing, is people are like, well, how do you do it? Try, try, put the Bible down and approach a saint that either has familial associations, is within the cultural context, or you're just interested with, and it's like in your location, I got St. Joseph Church right over there. Approach them and petition them for something. Just give them an offering, burn a candle for them, try to form a relationship with them, and see what happens. Someone goes, can I work with, like, can I work with a saint if I'm just a practitioner? Fuck around and find out. So you literally just see what happens. What's the worst that's gonna happen? They say no? Okay. Like if you were doing this with spirits out of a close practice, I'd be like, whoa, no, but this is Catholicism, baby. It exists in a hundred different places and a hundred different religions. It's not even just Catholicism. The saints are everywhere all the time in so many different regions and approached differently in all of those regions. So why, why not create one more? Why not create one more? Also, Everyone around me is like, 
I don't know, I think we should queer the Catholic Church. Not even the Catholic Church, queer Catholicism. At the end of the day, someone is still going to come onto this video and say this is wrong because it's not what Catholicism teaches. Okay, that's your opinion. I do not need everyone to understand my practice. I need this video to find who it's meant to, to find the people who are respectful and curious and really unsure of how to do this. How to do folk magic when there's so much Catholicism in their region. How to do folk Catholicism when they hate the church, when it hurt them really badly. That's who this video was for. This video isn't trying to convince anyone that doesn't want to be convinced that my practice is valid and what I'm doing is respectful. It's to help people who are sitting here with their hands out like the Persian cat meme, like, I, what? And that's who it's for. Because I've garnered a, a large amount of folk practitioners on this page, and all the folk practitioners who have folk Catholicism in there are sitting there like, fuck yeah, dude. If another evangelical Christian finds this, <laughs> that did happen, I did block that specific one, but if another one finds it and uses my words and takes it out of context, I am going full jettatore, full intentional, full intentional hex, which I don't do very frequently, but I am so over that vibe. <laughs> I hate it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how you understand all of this, is through 34 35 minutes of explaining cultural context, differences between belief and institution, and then also adding on that it's okay to do whatever you want. Oh my god, Red Hawk outside my door? Is it God? God? I'm God. They're building a nest. I'll finish up with talking about a saint work, deity work. No. The saints are people who lived who can perform miracles or they are folk folk emblems they are not divinity and it's really important in a lot of different traditions they are centered and invoked more than jesus and god but they are never placed above oh my god there's two of them babe look out the window we got hawks in a tree holy sh saints you know there's the level of like respecting the cultural context which is going to be different depending on the folk magic and the folk catholicism you are looking at even more so different by region um understanding that and respecting it but also uh, it, a christian divinity is a whole can of worms i don't have the brain capacity all right i like diana i don't need to think about it a lot diana is important to my family same with mary I'm good there. I also never have had a push to go find out how I feel about Jesus or God or Christian divinity. Because um, it's not really included in Italian folk magic. I mean, it is sometimes, and once again, depends on the region, but once again, a lot of emphasis on the saints, not necessarily Jesus. I know there's the whole thing, like, Jesus saves, Jesus is our savior, and that's great. I did not ask him for that, and I feel like that's a little bit of an off-footing if he comes up as like, I died for your sins. Do I think he's probably a cool dude? Was a cool dude? Sure. I don't have enough energy for that, all right? I'm gonna stay in my corner over here, where there's like Saint Mary. St. Anthony, Diana, St. Lucy, Michael, like a, just a group of really Italian saints over here and that are really often invoked in Italian folk magic, just right there, that's where I'm staying. Um, I don't consider saints to be deities because they are not divine beings. They were people who lived and so working with them is more akin to working with spirits than it is to working with deities. They existed on this earth at some point and they have left this earth or they still exist on this earth uh, and they are people who have performed miracles or miraculous things or have been martyred. So it's different than deity work because they're not deities and I think to call them deities is to approach is is that really the only way I think that you can be disrespectful approaching this is to just kind of be like well I'm just gonna do whatever I want and treat them however I want even if it's like wrong and what I mean by wrong is like doing no research on it on folk Catholicism or folk magic before beginning to implement it into your practice not really trying to reconnect with the community 
of the folk magic you were working to reconnect with. Furthermore, treating saints as if they are divine beings because at least in folk Catholicism in Italy, they are not necessarily like, they are not gods. There are some Roman gods syncretized with them, but I keep them separate because the cultural context is important. It's important. Cultural context is everything, babies. To hop into this with no cultural context and just picking and choosing what you want from folk Catholicism and folk magic to implement into your practice is not a good look. It's not a cute look because when you do that, you're ignoring the really important essential part of folk magic, the people. And you are one of the people, but if you're just gonna ignore an entire community to do whatever you want with these entities that are important within this community and approached specifically a certain way within this community, um, I mean, they may not, they may not respond. <laughs> and that's the thing, a lot of people were like, how does it work? I'm like, I just asked them. I just hit them up and then they answered and I've just been hitting them up ever since. If I talk to a saint and he, they don't respond to me, I'm just like, all right, I'll come back later. I don't, I'm not necessarily gonna go to them for a bunch of things if they don't respond to me. I hope this answered people's questions. At the end of the day, say it with me, fuck the church. Be respectful, be aware of the folk of the Catholicism or the magic that you are working to reconnect with. Um, be, be, be open to things. That could just be you setting up a Mary altar and all of a sudden you getting pregnant. That was a joke. <laughs> Actually, you don't have to be open to things if you don't want to. You could be a closed book. You could literally be a locked door and that would be fine. This is just a video that I wanted to make for a lot of people that I felt like were approaching folk Catholicism and therefore Italian folk magic in a way that isn't necessarily accurate. And I wanted to kind of give context, talk about it more, etc. Not everyone's gonna like this video and that's okay. It's not for everyone. It's for a specific group of people. And I hope that, that this video finds you and I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope that you know that no matter where you end on this spectrum, if you hate Catholicism and the church, if you're comfortable with it, but don't wanna call yourself a Catholic, if you're someone who was hurt by the church, but still wanna connect with like Mary, all of those approaches are good and valid and fine. And you can do things the way that they're gonna work for you. You don't ever have to say the Our Father. You don't ever have to pray a nine day prayer. You don't even need to set up a tiny little altar and like a little veneration area in your space. You could just sometimes go to a cemetery where there's a statue of a saint you like and leave something. All right. I'm gonna go watch these red-tailed hawks and tonight we're going bowling. If you still go bowling, let me know in the comments. Um, thank you so much for watching uh, and listening and letting me talk to you today. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Siate Benedetti. Oh, remember to drink water and if you want, you can comment, subscribe, like, turn the notifications on, but absolutely no problem if you don't want to. It's also cool. Siate Benedetti. <laughs> Oh, it's so bright.